What's up guys? Welcome to our 2,000 square foot raised bed garden. 2,000 square feet is it's not even a tenth of an acre and yet we are able to grow so much food for our family here. This is a look at the garden only a few short weeks ago and in just a few seconds here you're going to get to see the garden in all of its glory in full swing producing a ton of food. So welcome to Shepherding Pepper's Farm. Good morning guys, welcome back to the garden. If you're new to the channel, I'm Natasha. This is Shepherding Pepper's Farm and this is the kitchen garden and today we are doing a garden tour. We are gardening in Horry County, South Carolina, gardening zone 8B. We act a lot more like 8A given the climate and all that good stuff, but nevertheless we are growing in raised beds here as you can see. These beds are 4 feet wide, 24 feet long, and 3 feet deep. They are wonderful and they grow us a lot of food. We do a lot of vertical gardening here to maximize our space since we are trying to be as sustainable as possible. So let's take a look around this garden. All right, what you're seeing right here is our melon tunnel. This side of the trellis, this first one right here, these are Haramadu melons and these are so very, very good. We actually had one growing on the back side of this bed because there are some melons back here. With watermelons, it's pretty easy to tell if they're ready because that main stem will turn brown and then you're like, okay, I've got a great watermelon here. Now with the Haramadu melon, I wasn't exactly sure if it was gonna be the same way to tell when it's ripe. This one actually popped off completely. I came over to it, I touched it very lightly yesterday and it popped right off the vine. It was delicious. It was a very sweet, almost honeydew-like melon. So that was really good. Now over here on this opposite side, these are supposed to be tiger melons, but the melons got all mixed up label-wise, so I'm not exactly sure if that's what that is. These right here are our vine peaches. Let's see them right there. I saw one earlier that was starting to get a little bit of coloring on it. There we go. You see, vine peaches will turn completely yellow when they are ripe. So vine peaches are actually a type of melon that you're not going to want to sit down and just eat fresh. This is a type of melon that you are going to want to use in cooking and canning. It's a great substitute for apples. So if you've ever taken apples and canned them or put them up in your pantry or made an apple pie, you can use vine peaches as an apple substitute and all of those same recipes they can exceptionally well. So they're a really great melon to grow if you're wanting to stock your pantry. But when they are fresh, they don't have a lot of flavor to them. So. And then over here on this opposite side, these are your Sharon Teese melons. I'm excited for these to start coming in. Now if we work our way down just a little bit further, I think this trellis got slightly intermingled because this right here looks a bit more like our snow leopard melon. It has this slight patterning to it. Once it's fully ripe, we'll know for sure, but that's what that looks like. Whereas on the bottom, you can see our beautiful Kajari melon is starting to ripen. Over on the opposite side, we have a honeydew melon that is growing. And then if we come down just a little bit, this is probably one of the melons I'm so unbelievably excited about. This is a Prescott Fond Blanc melon. It looks like a pumpkin. It starts out with this beautiful bluish green coloring and then you'll know it's ripe when it starts to look golden or almost straw colored. I am so excited about this melon right here. This is our first year growing these. They've done really well. Looking forward to trying this. If you are growing melons on the ground, you want to make sure that you come through and you rotate your melons because if you get a lot of rain or a lot of dampness in your soil, which you would want because melons like a lot of water, it's important when you're growing them, but they will get soft spots that will rot if you don't rotate your melons. So that's something to think about when you're growing them on the ground. Now if we come over to this opposite side right here, I have not seen any fruit yet over here so I'm not exactly sure what these ones are supposed to be. And over here I have very disappointing news. So these are supposed to be pepino melons. I got the seeds off of Etsy. Risky business, I know, but the seller had decent reviews so I was like, okay, you know. A viewer had said, hey, watch out for those because I got some seeds and they were actually eggplant and I came out and I looked at them. There is a white eggplant growing. I totally got gypped. So in the future, I probably won't be getting any seeds off of Etsy, but lesson learned. <laughs> you can see that white eggplant right there growing. Go figure. 
So if we continue on around this bed, you can see that we have several different peppers that are growing over and through here. These are California Wonder Bells. I did come through and dust these. That's why you're seeing a little bit of whiteness on here with a slightly concentrated solution of diatomaceous earth. So if you see white spots, that's what that is. And then you can see more California Wonder Bells over here. And these right here are Lesia Sweet Peppers. Now if we come over and down through this side of the garden beds, these right here are Atuta Peppers. You can see these are starting to ripen. These are kind of short little stubby guys. I'm gonna go ahead and take these just because this particular plant is quite small and I'd like it to get a little bit more growth on it. Same thing over here. These are more Atuta Peppers. One of the things that I really like to do is put a lot of chopped up green peppers into my freezer and Ziploc bags. That way when a recipe calls for green peppers throughout the winter and early spring when I don't have peppers in the garden, I can just pull them out and cook with those. So we're gonna chop a lot of those up, but the red ones are often used for fresh eating. You do typically wanna use bigger peppers when you're chopping them up for green peppers just because it's very time consuming to chop up many, many tiny little red peppers. So these right here are mini baby bells. These were seeds that were saved from a grocery store mini baby bell. They've grown and done pretty well. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna list these pepper varieties off for you and then I'll start harvesting these. So again, these are store-bought mini baby bells. These will ripen up to an orange color, I would assume, possibly red though. And they're all in through here. These right here are smaller Cubanelli peppers. And we have some California Wonder Bells that are starting to come in. Okay, so do you see this right here? I touched on this briefly about two weeks ago, but if you see a spot like this on your peppers, this is sunburn, essentially. It's called sun scold. When your peppers get too much sunlight, they can develop sunburn spots on them, and then those pieces will rot. If your weather isn't too wet or humid, typically it'll scab over. You just don't want to eat that part, but the rest of the pepper is good. If you have a lot of humidity and a lot of rain and you start to see that, you might want to pull the pepper, take it inside, and eat it because it could continue to spread. More Cubanelli peppers in the back, and then we have some chocolate bell peppers that are ripening back there. And then the majority of these in this little section is more California Wonder Bell peppers, followed by Legia Sweet Peppers over and through here. See, this one's kind of close to getting a sunburn. It's got a very weak spot right here, and it's starting to yellow. Now behind the peppers are our tomatoes, our experiment tomatoes. They've actually been looking pretty good. Again, pleasantly surprised because the majority of horticultural information will say that these succumb to blight pretty much immediately upon regrowth. So again, just continuing to collect the data and analyze it, see how these do. We are getting new blooms. There's a tiny bit of spotting on the leaves, but it's pretty minimal, so. This next section right here, this arch trellis has Blauhill beans on it. This is a type of pole bean that can be eaten fresh as a snap bean, or you can let the beans dry go to seed and save the seeds and put them up in your pantry for the year. This is one of our favorites. I did come through and snip these off at the bottom because I'm about done with these on here. I want these to dry a little bit quicker and then I'd like to use this trellis for something else. So, and then we have California zinnias underneath this trellis here and here and here. These are Scabiosa zinnias. They have this neat little hoof on the top. These have been pretty fun. All throughout here, you can see we have additional basil. It's the same stuff, dark purple, opal basil. Oh look, little tomatoes, how exciting. And then this is Genovese basil, and down here we have some spicy basil. This is just a bit more pungent in flavor. This is all done super well. Now over here, oh my goodness, it's like Christmas. Look at all the red peppers. So these peppers have been amazingly productive. They are super sweet. They're a really good size. So these have been peppers that we have been eating on fresh and not really cooking with them because they just get devoured by myself and the kids. We love red peppers, especially sweet red peppers. So I am letting all of these ripen as much as I can in this section so we can enjoy these red peppers.
Now back behind those peppers over here we have these are the Pippin's Golden Honey Peppers right there. And then over and through here we have some Italian pepperoncinis that we are going to harvest. There's a few of them in there that have turned red and we'll save the seeds from those ones. This is our hot wax peppers. We haven't been harvesting these as much because I am trying to let these ripen to an orange red color to make hot sauce out of them. But what I will say is even though I haven't been harvesting them on harvesting days, frequently Layla or I or even Seth will come out here and take peppers off of this plant and just bring them inside so we can eat them with our meals. They're really good. I've been very impressed with those this year. And then in through here we just have some more California Wonder Bell peppers. You can see we're getting some good fruit on those. I'll probably let these go just a little bit longer and then I'll pull these hmm, midweek or at the next garden tour because I'd like those to get a little bit bigger. This is a ton of basil. <laughs> now if we bypass our peppers that we were just at, this trellis right here has loofah growing on it. It's looking beautiful. Over here, this trellis has just had the cucumbers kind of run over onto it and I've just let it. These right here are Tokyo green cucumbers. This right here is from one of two things, this misshapenness on the cucumbers. This is either from blight or it's from too much water all at once. It can cause this misshapenness. I will probably take this and throw this over to the chickens just to make their day. But this and this, these are good. As is this one. So I'm gonna need to get the wheelbarrow to harvest these in one second. Now all in through here, these are pumpkins. We used to have our soybeans in here and then this has a mix of Connecticut pumpkins and Jackby Little pumpkins and Long Island cheese pumpkins. This very sad trellis has all of our cucumbers that we are ripening to go to seed and a couple little stragglers that are hanging on in here as well. So these are ready to be pulled for seed. You definitely wanna wait until they're kind of brown and cracking almost to pull them for seed because that's when you'll get the highest germination rates. These right here are more California Wonder Bell peppers. This is a weed, very deep in their weed. This right here is actually radish oil that survived this whole summer because I forgot about it and neglected it, which is fine. These right here are Ash County pimento peppers. These are looking really lovely. These are actually the peppers used to make pimento cheese. And then there are a few Atuta peppers mixed in there as well. And these peppers are just finally coming into their own, it looks like. All right, up and through this next bed, we have lots of Roma tomatoes. This is the only bed that we have right now that has tomatoes growing on it and setting fruit in a more productive way. The rest of the tomato beds got cut down. You can see we have some melons at the bottom of the beds. This is a very small Charleston gray watermelon. We used to have tomatillos in this bed and we hacked all those down. So I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna harvest all of these red fruits. Over here in this next bed, we have more cucumbers on this trellis and through here. These are Bates Alpha cucumbers and Tokyo Green cucumbers. Bates Alpha, Tokyo Green. And then these right here are some sunflowers that I planted in the garden recently just to give it some more life. All in through here, these are dragon tongue bush beans. That one looks pretty decent for the amount of bug damage that we have all over these. 
I actually put the netting up. You can see it back there. We're gonna do a whole slew of bush beans under that netting right there. Because the bugs have been so bad that we haven't been able to put up nearly as much canning wise for our green beans as we typically do and I need to make sure that I get that done. So I'm going to be planting that full of green beans probably this week. Oh, I'm not a sunflower. They might be on my dress, but I promise you I'm not one. All in through here, these beautiful melons, these are orange glow watermelons that you're seeing. They get to be a really good size. Ooh, that sounds nice. So although this sounds good and has a solid thump to it, the stem isn't brown or turning brown. And I, what I will say is the curly cue, the tendal as you call it, is completely brown and dried up. But I don't like to harvest my melons until that stem has started to at least turn brown. That's really important when you're harvesting melons, especially watermelon varieties. If the stem is brown, it's gonna be a very sweet, thoroughly ripe watermelon. So as much as this sounds good, I'm not gonna harvest it just yet. Now, right after the melons, this trellis right here on this side has pole beans planted on it, Blue Lake pole beans. They haven't been doing super well. So I came through and I planted some squash on this side and on this side, and we'll see how that does. If you come around, there are potatoes planted randomly throughout the garden. You can see those are all sprouting up really nicely. This right here is a volunteer ground cherry. I don't actually need that in the garden. And although it pains me to pull it out, it will interact with the potatoes and I don't want that. And then as you can see right here on this next trellis over, this also has Blue Lake pole beans on it. There's really not a lot of fruit going on over here. The watermelons have started to intermingle a little bit and that's okay. Now over here at the base of the beans, we have some lemon drop watermelons that are planted. Same thing over here. I'm gonna wait until this stem turns brown and then I'll harvest that, but I'm really excited about those. On through here we have different varieties of peppers, California Wonder Bells, Cubanelli's, all sorts of different goodness planted. Some of these are quite a bit bigger and some of them are a little bit smaller. This is a habanada, so a not spicy habanero pepper. Over and through here we have more cucumbers, Bates Alphas, Tokyo Greens. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these. This massive beauty right here. These are Double Click Rose Cosmos. My husband is now convinced this is a weed because it has not bloomed once. I keep promising him, I'm like, they are Cosmos. I swear to you, they are. But he doesn't believe me anymore. So we're just gonna have to wait and show him when they finally bloom. So if we come around past my knotweed cosmos, you can see there's two. You can see they're very strategically planted right there. And then look, I think we're about to get a little bloom. So that's super exciting. This is the arch chalice that is being taken over by our passion fruit. You can see that the fruit that we bagged up last week is definitely growing. I actually saw another fruit unbagged around this other side somewhere. Yep, right here. So I'll need to put this in a bag soon too. These will turn purple when they're ripe. And then this side of the trellis has a few remaining Puninira cucumbers on it. A little bit of stragglers. I guess a big, big straggler down there. My goodness, it's a pretty big Puninira cucumber. But besides that, I'm not seeing a ton of fruit on this trellis. Yes, I will say I do have to check in between here because often there is cucumbers hidden. Like that. And if we work our way down, this bed has soybeans planted in it along with a few different smaller varieties of squash. Our beautiful Lysanthius roses. I love these so very much. And then this side has pink Lysanthius roses in it. I'm gonna harvest a few of these and take these inside for cut flowers. They last a really long time in the house, so that's exciting. Now over here on this trellis, we have cuca melons that are taking off and doing their thing. I thought I saw. You can see we're getting little itty bitty blooms right there. Now cuca melons really explode and take off so soon this whole side will be just littered with cuca melons, which is exciting. 
More California giant zinnias. These are Kilimanjaro white marigolds. These exploded with blooms over the last week. These are awesome. My marigolds always get super, super big out here. Now the melon varieties that we have in this bed include honeydews and we have a few banana melons in through there. We also have some royal golden watermelons in here as well, which is another variety of yellow watermelon and a few lemon drops. The royal golden watermelons often have yellowing leaves to them, which is exciting. Whereas in this bed, this bed has a lot of cantaloupes in it. If we work our way down, you'll see more and more melons coming through. There's a Charentese melon right through there. We still have our tiny spoon tomatoes hanging out and doing really good. This section right here, this is an Armenian yard long cucumber and I am letting this actually ripen all the way on the plant for you guys to see. I mean, look how massive this is. That is because, ooh, this is gonna need support. That's because Armenian yard long cucumbers are actually a melon and I wanted to let this turn into a melon so you guys could see the whole finished product because I thought that would be pretty neat for you guys. This is the arch trellis into the perennial garden. We've got cucumbers on one side and then we have our Armenian yard lawn cucumber on the other followed by some really beautiful California giant zinnias. These are awesome. Now in through here there are a few different varieties of cantaloupe than the one that I showed you on the other side. This right here is a honey rock cantaloupe. You can tell because it has these distinctive lines in it, which normal cantaloupes will not have. Look at these. Aren't those beautiful? I love this almost pastel color on these zinnias right here. Love that. Over here, you can see how absolutely massive the Swartz and Beer and Berry has gotten. I'm gonna need to come through and check these and see if they're any ready to harvest. There's a multitude of bugs on these though that are sucking the juices out of the plant and at this point I've almost just let it become a sacrifice to the bugs. Any ripe fruit is being taken out just about. Now down here, our cayennes are ripening and looking beautiful. I'm gonna harvest a ton of these to make hot sauce. I'm so excited. Besides our cayennes, we also have some serrano peppers and then some big gems. Look at that though. Isn't that just beautiful? I love it. We also have a few hot paprika plants in through here as well. You can see these are also starting to ripen. The Scoville on this only says, oh, see, there's another sunburn spot. But the Scoville on these says that they only get the Scoville on these says that they only get up to 2,500 at its highest. They're definitely hotter than that. At least these ones are. They are quite warm. They're, they're mm, not all of them, I will say, but we've had a few that are up there with some lower hot wax peppers. These have been pretty spicy. We have some more hot wax peppers over and through here. This is a red habanero pepper. We've got another one right through there. We have some dill peppers in through here. More serranos, some poblanos in the back. My beautiful sugar rush peach peppers. Love these, these are my favorite. And then behind here, you can see that we also have a volunteer watermelon invading everything and just enjoying its life, which is fine with me. We come around to this side, you'll see that some of these tomatoes have really started to take off. We've got a lot of green foliage over there, which is exciting. Now this is a sad sight. Do you see that? A vine borer got to one of our Rampicante squash. It's lasted this whole season so far from the spring. So the vine borers got to this particular side of the Rampicante squash. This plant produced massively for us. We still have Rampicante squash growing strong over here on this side and on this side, so I'm not fully worried about it because I think those will continue to produce. But I mean, as far as it goes, this squash has lasted a significantly longer time in this garden than any other squash variety ever has. Also, I don't know if you know this, but if you live in South Carolina, 
Clemson University actually doesn't recommend planting pumpkins in the spring. It's recommended that you only do pumpkins in the fall out here in South Carolina. So if you've had trouble growing pumpkins in the past, that could be why. Now over here we have the Aunt Molly's ground cherries. Clearly there's a ton of ripe fruit that is ready, so we're gonna go ahead and harvest all of that. Now over here you can see some of the squash that we recently planted into the garden. I might actually cover this with some of this netting just to give it some protection until it gets a little bit bigger. Now if we come around over on this side, this is actually winged beans right here. I'm excited because I've never tried winged beans before. They are interplanted with our giant Indian snake bean. You can see that right there. I haven't really loved the flavoring on this, so we'll have to see if that changes, but haven't really been loving that. This right here is a volunteer pumpkin. This is a butternut right there. Hopefully that stays protected from the vine borers. Butternuts are my favorite, so I get really bummed out if the vine borers take those out. I love them. I actually want to take you guys really quickly with me to check on the peanuts in the perennial garden, and then I think that'll probably end this garden tour. So, probably the crabgrass. So a lot of pumpkins are just now starting to come in, and it looks like we've got a little bit longer on the peanuts, but we should probably still get some this year. I wasn't sure we were going to, given how the perennial garden got totally taken over with grass, but. I'm excited to get anything at all this year. All right guys, that is gonna wrap up the garden tour for today. I thoroughly enjoyed hanging out with you and I will see you in the next garden tour.